that song is my earliest childhood memory. I'm seven years old. Star Wars had been released in 1983. Well, Return of the Jedi had been released in 1983. And so South Africa got it in about 84 in someone's luggage. <laughs> and so naturally the Free State got it somewhere near 2035. <laughs> and so my parents, and my, my brothers specifically, that we go down to the Alpha Cinema, which was this very large, imposing Art Deco building that looked remarkably out of place in a small town in the middle of the Northern Free State. But it was this amazing building. We went in, it had these huge slate stone tiles, and there would be these display cases showing films of deep artistic integrity like Kung Fu Whamma Lama 5 and other cuck like that. And we went in, and I'm, I'm quite young, and we go into this dark room, and I sit down with my parents. I, I'm seven, but I still sit on my mom's lap. It, it's a Catholic thing. And <laughs> making up your own jokes already. Okay. And I sit, and that music plays, and I know something important's coming because it's John Williams. And he's just like, fucking, yes, I'm hyped for it. What am I looking at? I have no idea. I'm seven. I have no word, in, 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 in no say in what it is I'm doing. I'm just there. And I was really happy by the end of it. And the music plays and the, the text comes strolling up, which I've never seen before. And it says, Return of the Jedi. I don't know what a Jedi is or why it's being returned, but I'm freaking keen. <laughs> and I'm going. And I remember watching this whole movie and I'm amazed because there's lights and fire and, and spaceships shooting at each other. It's like ADHD fuel in the making. We didn't know yet. And I'm watching this and I'm so enthralled. And I clearly remember the scene where Darth Vader removes his helmet and you see his face for the first time. And that image is my earliest childhood image. And it's probably one of the happiest because that was when the universe says, it stamped my passport and said, you're a dreamer, be on your way. <laughs> and that's how it started for me. And I, it was an amazing moment. And I remember sitting there and my mom is, um, my mom's right there. And the scene comes where Yoda dies. And I was just, I, I was completely thrown because I hadn't seen the other two movies. And he dies and he disappears. And my mom goes, ah, oh, very nice. You save on funeral. <laughs> So if at any point in the rest of the show you wonder what it was exactly that caused X, Y, or Z, these are the people I hail from. My, my mom is very practical, my father, well he's my dad, you know, he, um, he's, they have two different kinds of sense of humor. My dad will watch a Tom and Jerry cartoon and he'll laugh a very specific way, go, hey, hey, hey. Whereas my mom would ask questions like, ah, oh, we'll say things like, ah, oh, save on funerals, it's very cool. And then, and off I was on the road to geekness. And then time would pass. And the Star Wars movies are a very touchy thing for me. I have not watched the last Star Wars movie that came out. And I'll be honest, I haven't watched The Mandalorian yet. I know I'm supposed to, but since The Last Jedi, I do not trust the House of Mouse anymore. <laughs> Twice, well, twice, fuck it, whatever this number is. Twice they took me, in, they took my childhood into a dark room and fucked it up. And I was like, no more, I'm done. And so, I'd, 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 you know, I'll just watch the original three and, and, and one tiny scene in the prequels and, and Rogue One, and I'm good. And the reason why there's that one tiny scene in the prequels I like, it's the scene that I had waited for for 30 years, where you finally got to see Yoda fight. Yes. <laughs> that fucking took a long damn time. You can't leave an audience. That, that is next level shit. George Martin is blamed for doing horrible things to his fandom by just freaking killing off characters left, right, and center. They painted Yoda as a Jedi master, 800 years old, and then you see him die. You never see him fight. And then came that scene where he fought Count Duke on his head. <laughs> Those names were fucking stupid. <laughs> Count Duke. Yeah. You know that the reason why he became a Sith Master is because he just kept killing people because they would say his name and he'd go. 
and, right, so that's another point for you. Yoda, who has the most amazing con I have ever fucking seen. He's got this doddering old man bullshit going on. He sold it for four freaking movies. That is a long con. And he comes in. He has this look on his face of Kick your monkey ass my fucking self, I will. And then he turns into the most aggressive flying lawnmower I've ever seen. He's the Tasmanian devil's aggressive brother. And when he's finished, then... That is an ad waiting to happen. Viagra, when you need performance most. So welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for coming through tonight. Please give yourselves a round of applause. Thank you so much. Hi, right, now. Um, the stuff I have arrayed here is various parts of my childhood, which I will get to. Now, when people came through tonight, uh, the, I ran a bit of a competition online and I said, send in, what, uh, tell me what your fandom is and explain why it's your favorite fandom and I will, there's a, you know, maybe you'll win two tickets. So, I have to, <laughs> there's one of them. I have to read you my favorite response. It's quite long. At least it's well thought out. I have to read this to you. So I asked, what's your favorite fandom? What do you geek out about and why? And he said, my little pony, friendship is magic. It says here, now hear me out on this. Supposedly everybody has a pony, like my wife loves Twilight Sparkle and my friend loves Pinkie Pie. However, I do not have a favorite pony, but I do love the pony called Discord. The reason for this is that he is essentially Q from Star Trek. He's even voiced by the guy who played Q from Star Trek. He understands that sometimes using chaos is what's needed. That even chaos can be a force for good. This is pointed out after he befriended Fluttershy. Also, it shows a class system to young kids without them realizing it. And then at the bottom he says, Actually, I'm just joking. My favorite geek is, my geek is Flash because I think I like it. He goes fast. <laughs> so welcome to the show. I just want to check. By round of applause, how many are geeks and how many are not? Non-geeks make some noise. One, two, three. <laughs> cool. Geeks make some noise. One, two, three. <laughs> Fair enough. Now, I've got my set up over here, more or less. At some point, I might accidentally swap things around, and so the segues will get weirder. But we begin like so. When I was a kid, um, I grew up in the 80s, where there was not a lot of geek to be had. You had books, sometimes, because the library in Velcom was not exactly decked out. <laughs> Those of you who have no idea, Valcom is this quaint little fishing village in the northern Free State. And um, yeah, everybody who hears I'm from the Free State automatically wants to deduct like 100 IQ points. I don't know why. It's, they automatically assume like there's this borderline and as you pass through the die, 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 die. But growing up watching television in the 80s was very unique because the SABC had this remarkable idea that they wanted to try. They would buy TV shows from overseas and then dub them into Afrikaans as though we would all say, my fuck, those are excellent production values. How did they manage to mimic the New York skyline in Bronco Spray? But then the fun part came is that they dubbed it into Afrikaans and then they would broadcast the original soundtrack on Radio 2000 at the same time. This was called the simulcast because we broadcast simultaneously, you see. And so you would have shows where it was pretty freaking obvious these are Americans, but or it's like there was Remington Steel where Pierce Brosnan, a very young Pierce Brosnan, is standing out on a balcony somewhere in New York and going, Madach. <laughs> I'm fucking stupid. I'm like nine. I'm going, as a, oh fuck, they speak the language in New York. That's excellent. I'll get on just fine. Then, 
There would be other shows, like where they dubbed stuff and it was pretty friggin' obvious that they had just decided, yeah, let's just fucking dub it. <laughs> they took Spider-Man and dubbed it into Zulu. <laughs> that was hilarious. <laughs> it was called Rabubi. <laughs> which translates into English as Mr. Spider. <laughs> For those of you who don't know. So it's Rabubi, and I, quite frankly, would prefer to be saved by Rabubi. A name like Rabubi puts certain fucking strength into him that the little weedy shit who's currently playing him strongly fucking needs. Imagine there's a bank robbery. Guys come in and they're fucking breaking shit up and suddenly a guy comes through the window. Oh, I am Rabubi. Here's my guns. I'm so fucking sorry. I'm gonna go home and think about what I've done. I loved it. And it, as time went on, you know, it's, I remember a time when TV went off. When it just fucking stopped. And not because you'd reached your data cap or there was load shedding and your service provider died. No, off. You got that circular, multicolored cuck, which basically translates as fuck off this bed day. And, or it was just the test pattern, just and you would sit there, I, me and my ADD and my ADHD are going, surely it'll change at some point. <laughs> I stared into that thing so long, I saw to the event horizon of a black hole, okay? And there was fuck all TV there either. And I mean, I don't, I don't know when they decided to do this because I, I, not only did I exist in a time before friggin' super duper TV, I, at some point, would go to a library. If you had a school project, they would say, the information is in the library. <laughs> All of the information. It's in, and it's a selected highlights, depending on your school or your public library. And if it wasn't there, you were fucked in what you were. And I would go in there and there was Encyclopedia Britannica. And if you were one of those families that could afford Encyclopedia Britannica, you were king of the frickin' mountain. And the thing is, it was just like updates. Like, once every like five or ten years, they would release the new Encyclopedia Britannica, and you would have to pay the full price again. And it's, it's, this, this sounds very fucking familiar, isn't it, Windows? <laughs> now, you know, now you know where they got the damn business plan from. Books were the thing. Books were a powerful thing. I'm waiting for the day, like, as a parent, when I become a parent, well, when, when children show up, that I'm, I'm gonna have a weird moment with my kid because it'll be post-apocalyptic times and there will no longer be the internet and he's gonna ask me about where did the knowledge come from before the books and and I'm gonna say to him son come here he says, what is that, Father? He says, this is book. It is encyclopedia. It is the weapon of a knowledge knight. <laughs> For over a hundred years, the knowledge knights protected the power of knowledge and truth in the old world, before the dark times before the internet. <laughs> How did the knowledge die, Father? A pupil of knowledge known as Mike Zuckerberg. <laughs> he betrayed and murdered the knowledge. He was seduced by the power of the meme. <laughs> This is the only reason I brought this. <laughs> oh, fuck. It was... That sound was empowering as fuck. To... But it was also the sound of never getting laid. And, it's... and I mean, now, so... I, I had to go into the library for a reason. I had to do a project, and it was on history. 
and they said, choose three famous people from history and write a report on um, their similarities and their differences. That part I didn't hear because I was looking out the window at something cute, and <laughs> a, a, a cloud or something, a cat. And so I went in there and I'm reading these people, about these people, and I chose Julius Caesar and Adolf Hitler, and I chose uh, Neil Armstrong. Um, a warrior, a warrior emperor, a psychotic, and a guy who may or may not have stepped on the moon. Okay. Yeah, depending on if you watch Ancient Aliens, of course, yes. So, I'm reading through them now. The problem was, the previous weekend, I had been to a birthday party, which was a rare thing for me. I didn't have a lot of friends. Um, and that's not, oh, shame, it just fucking is. So when you're the only geeky kid in, this, in a small town, it, you struggle finding others because they don't want to reveal your geek to them in case it's a trap, you know, because <laughs> they've seen that Star Wars film. So I'm paging through this, and I'd been to this birthday party where they'd had helium balloons. And so in my head, I remember the sound that those things make. I, mean, I don't know when last you actually played around with helium balloons as an adult. <laughs> <laughs> because that is hours of freaking fun. <laughs> if you have a bunch of guys standing around a braai by themselves, just with freaking with helium balloons, they can amuse themselves all freaking weekend. They'll just sit there going, I'm a man to talk like this, guys, you gotta freaking try this. They will go to the rugby at Loftus like that. And then, <laughs> dark stones! And they go, Ugh. Oh, I'll try <laughs> so this is what I'm imagining in my head. I'm trying to picture Julius Caesar leading his soldiers into Gaul to fight Asterix and Obelix. Because I had read that historical book. So, it was a whole series. It was just like encyclopedias. And so just imagine whole squads, legionnaires of Rome, marching into Gaul, across the province of Armorica. Legionaries! Oh! You notice in all the historical movies when the army arrived, there's always a fucking breeze. I think it's because whoever they're about to invade sees what's coming and all of them... And that's why the invading army always looks so upset. They're like, it's quite a hot and stink here, Brutus. And so I picture all of them arrive and Julius Caesar is on his horse and he's got the freaking the laurel reef uh, over here. And uh, the reef, rather, not the reef. <laughs> I name myself Ariel. And so he comes riding in and he just. All of his soldiers ready, they've got siege engines, it's centurions, decurions, all these armies, and so. Up my signal, unleash! Ah! You know they would all have gone, oh, fuck this. <laughs> He'd be chasing off them. Come back to my stuff! If Adolf Hitler had spoken that way, the war would never have kicked off. <laughs> Imagine he's freaking on a podium now. All our souls are destroyed! What about Poland? Max no, Max no! All of his soldiers fall, slam, fall, slam, all my eyes! At the head of the column, there's Barney the dinosaur. I hate you, you hate me! I know he's not supposed to be there, but it would make sense if he was. You wouldn't. Uh, you'd open a history book, and there is a. Uh -huh. Can you imagine if they fucked around with the oxygen mix that Neil Armstrong had? That would have made the moon landing fucking funny. <laughs> He'd be sitting there going, boop, boop, boop. That's one small step for man, one giant loop for mankind. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> and then, finally, the internet came. <laughs> Eventually, really fucking slowly, it arrived in drips and drabs. <laughs> Those of you who have never experienced what it was like when internet first arrived here, 56k modem. Those of you who don't know how slow that is by, by modern standards, have you ever been... Are you okay? <laughs> oh, that's awesome, thank you. Have you ever been 
in a like, cuck coverage area and your phone goes to edge <laughs> and you try surfing the net on edge and you get on edge because this is bullshit. Here's some thing for you. Um, edge is three times faster than a 56k motor. <laughs> And the internet would go off. <laughs> the internet was so shit that you had to plan. <laughs> First, you had to make a fucking announcement in the house. <laughs> no one make a phone call till Monday. <laughs> because when you dialed up, that's literally what it did. It was like a fax machine. It would dial up. And while it was dialing up, you would hear the internet scream. <laughs> Because your phone line was trying to reach for the internet, but it was far away. The internet used to make this sound. <laughs> and if you got boo-doo-doo, you literally came right there. Because the internet worked where you would start it up and leave. Because to watch that really shitty Windows thing of just this little line going from there, your computer, to the interwebs. And it, and it says, dialing up attempt one of five. <laughs> and it would literally become like freaking Hunger Games. You'd go, if I may the odds be ever in your favor. Come on! And then, two of five. Son of a bitch! Three of five, go for fuck's sake. No, I'm leaving, I can't freaking, no, I must look, I, I must look. It's four or five, what do you do? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody move. <laughs> it's just like shagging, there at the end there, it's like, No one move. <laughs> and you'd go online and try to load a website and time passes. <laughs> I mean, now, I remember the first time I went onto a broadband connection. I didn't know it was going to be a broadband connection. I was in a coffee shop in Stockholm in Sweden and I needed to check my email for some name. Like anybody knew to contact me, I was away far away. And I walked up to this thing, and it was just a computer with a cable plugged in. There was no Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi did not exist yet. This is B Wi-Fi, like way. In the world. And I typed in Hotmail, <laughs> and I clicked Enter. Fuck! And my Catholicness came out. It was going, El diablo cazador de hombres, save yourself! The power of Christ compels you. What is wrong with it? And it was, it was amazing. I mean, I've ha I have these up here, and these are called stiffy discs. This is why the save icon looks the way it does. This holds 1.44 meg. Meg, the smaller, the, well, there was a really big one called floppy disk, which held 750 bytes, <laughs> 750 uh, kilobytes. And a bigger one. Yes, and there were all these different ones. Uh, this is, there, there's nine of them here. <laughs> the nine of them can't hold the current compression of one MP3. <laughs> I bought a 64 gigabyte flash drive that is this big <laughs> and then i went on take a lot and they were selling four terabyte ssds it's this big and it can hold all of the stupid of facebook for a day <laughs> how the fuck did we come up with so much crap <laughs> This is the thing that's always bothered me about the internet. You go on there and you sit there and it's like, what the fuck is all this cuck? And you look and you click and this is rubbish and you put in an ad blocker and this is cuck. I have ADHD. I got diagnosed with it 
two years ago, I'm 43 now, to find out that you have ADHD when you are 41 <laughs> is like finding out that your super duper crush would have done harmoniously awesome things to you 20 years ago. <laughs> At 21, you can do something with that knowledge. At 11, you can do something with that knowledge. You can get the meds, you can do the exercise. At 41, knowing that I have this now, all I can do is go to my old high school teachers and varsity <laughs> teachers and say, hi, yeah, it's not you, it's me, I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, and for those of you who've never experienced it, what ADHD and ADD are, is ADD is what I call it. ADD is attention deficit disorder, which means you can't pay attention for shit. You, and ADHD is what I have, which is attention deficit hyperactive disorder. I just call it attention deficit HD. Um, so <laughs> when I do pay attention, fuck me, it's clear. And it's, what happens is they give you all these different drugs, but the, I call it Ushiny syndrome. People who have ADD and ADHD, is like they get distracted easily. Like, they say, oh, look at the kitty. And now you know why there are so many pictures of cats on the internet. <laughs> they knew their audience. When they built the internet, they listen, just randomly stick freaking cats everywhere. So they'll just, somewhere on the webpage, so that at least they'll pay attention and go, wow, oh, oh kitty. Wow, look at the information. A, is that a kitty cat in the background? Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> That's why there are so many cats on the net. And your choices for medication are either stuff like Ritalin, or you can take Dacha, apparently. If you take weed, there's a slightly different reaction. Because <laughs> when you take Ritalin, it's not the same as weed. Weed slows you down gradually. You start here, and then when you smoke, it goes... <laughs> Whereas Ritalin is like being mugged by a brick of knowledge. <laughs> You're up here going, la 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 And the teacher will say, what's four times four? Potato. I don't fucking know. <laughs> I mean, it, it, and I, I, it's, it's an interesting taking those drugs. The, my mate Brian had the best description I've ever heard for what it feels like when you take the meds and then um, the, the noise in your head calms down. He says, imagine having a thousand TVs, all of them on, all of them at, a, at like maximum volu volume. Then you take the right medicine and suddenly it, it reduces your TVs to maybe four and you can control the volume. So essentially Ritalin steals your TVs. <laughs> so, there you go. So, there's that out of the way. Now, what's the next? Oh, yes. Um, when I was growing up in Belcom, um, being a geek, we had to find all sorts of things interesting. So you would watch TV and whatever was on, you would watch. Like Landbovjekblad and other farming cuck. You, I learned shit about how to raise sheep. I don't, I don't need that information. It's just, yeah, and there's, when there's cows, there's a yeah, yeah, fat on me, so I was going, whoa, 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 I'm too young to be seeing that. Was, although it's good practice, yes. Um, only later did I realize it's supposed to, the, the motion is supposed to be the other way. But that's how education works, trial and error and, and injuries. Um, and so at some point wrestling came on, not WWF, that came later. This was just stoi, which sounded like someone was getting moored. <laughs> See, wrestling. Sounds like stuff is happening. It's somebody getting hit. So what are we going to call this? Yeah, that's what we call it. Yeah, yeah. And they had awesome wrestling names. Afrikaans guys like Tornado and the Pink Panther and Mili Boo. Essentially, all just yeah, all just fat fucks in different outfits. I didn't know that a push club could just be a finishing move. And there was always some Otani in the front row with these huge fat wings. Like, I thought, shit, she's going to take off and fly, land on someone. And 
And I became a massive fan of professional wrestling, a huge fan. I love WWF. Like, to the end of my day, still, if I hear The Undertaker's theme song, like the hair on my arm stand up. Because I was in a, I, I got to do one of those childhood dream things. I went to WrestleMania. A few years back, I went to WrestleMania 33. And let me put it to you this way. No one puts on a show like the Americans do. Yeah. Not a fucking, not a chance. I don't care how much fireworks they set off at Loftus when the rugby is on. I don't get, none of those are fucking EMP. No, 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 no. <laughs> this is just WrestleMania. I can say just. It's just professional wrestling. That's all. It's not like the Olympics. At the start, this beautiful woman came out and sang the national anthem. And by the end of it, I wanted to be American. <laughs> there is so much hiss in that freaking room. I'm saying, if you could take Al-Qaeda Al terrorists out of Guantanamo Bay and seat them at one of those things and go, I love America. I am so sorry for blowing your shit up. Oh God, yes. And the whole crowd sang along with the anthem, something that never <laughs> 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 We sing in parts, it's like a choir. So. And then when they were finished singing the song, three F-18 fighter jets flew over the stadium, not one fucking Boeing, things with guns on, because it's America. I'm going, clearly the war is going well, and you do not need these people on duty. And it's the, the freaking energy in that place is freaking electric and I'm watching this thing and I'm so freaking into it. I sat there for six hours not moving, just watching this, this spectacle unfold. And apparently people in America need to piss all the fucking time because there's people going and they're coming back and going, why must you piss so early? There was hitting going on. And there came a moment in the show where um, it was a three-way table, ladders, chairs, match basically three groups there's like six guys in the ring grown men with ladders tables and chairs beating the fuck out of each other trying to get to one of these and i have never seen men fight over a belt like this before i've been to an edgar's red hanger sale and i've never seen it didn't even have sail written on a focal it was just this big gaudy ass belt i was going oh yeah fuck do it and they didn't know who the third tag team was going to be. And I'm sitting there going, oh, okay, uh, this is cool. Yeah, this is, yes, yeah, let's do this. And I'm just sitting there and the whole stadium goes quiet. It's 72,000 people, not a sound. Just And the MCs go, who could the third tag team be? And then they announced them. The tag team that they brought back had been gone for years, mainly because of their drug problems. <laughs> but clearly coming out of rehab gave them motivation to punch fuck out of people. And they announced them, ladies and gentlemen, your third tag team. The music for the Hardy Boys came up. And the two women st sitting in front of me came. <laughs> the sound that came out of these two ladies they were like 18 and 19. I, I have stepped on a fucking devil thorn, a, a, a thorn this big that went through my foot and I could not remove it. And I did not make a sound like, it was a sound that if you could keep it in a container, you could use it to scare away Satan. Okay? If a vampire came to me, he'd just like ash. <laughs> And I was just like, I'm watching the fight, but still, holy fuck. Because in my head, I'm going, I'm never going to make a woman do that. <laughs> These two guys have so much sex appeal that they are fucking over the and they're causing this. I'm right here and uh, nothing. <laughs> but it came the final match. And this was, everybody knew that this was going to be The Undertaker's first final match. <laughs> Fuck. The WWE writes storylines in the reverse of George Armand. 
no one fucking dies. <laughs> they get sent away. They come back. They say, no, I was just going for a takeaway. <laughs> And I'm standing there, I'm standing, now I haven't realized I've been standing for an hour and a half, which is no mean feat when you're in your 40s. It's like your knees are going, we're going to talk about this later. <laughs> but for now, childhood. <laughs> and I'm watching this, and his music hits, just that, doom, the single church bell tolls. All the lights in the arena go out. And I was like, oh. <laughs> And he comes walking down this, the, the, the fucking, a single beam of light from yon high in heaven. <laughs> and just like, this purple light everywhere. He rises up out of the freaking ramp like the demon of hell from Hades. And I'm just going, fuck, I son of a that effect alone is more than anything I've ever made on this earth. That's fucking awesome. And he comes out and he comes walking down as slow as fuck. Like an 85 year old who's been shot in the hip. Just me. And he gets to the ring. And he's fighting this guy called Roman Reigns. And Roman Reigns is hot as fuck, ladies. <sighs> He's just, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> he's the sort of man that if an old Afrikaans lady saw him, he's like, yes, he is moi. <laughs> yes, he, oh my dear, yes, he is moi. <laughs> I'm looking at the two of them fight, and at obviously at the end of it, Undertaker loses. He puts Roman Reigns over, basically setting him up as the next generation. And all of his stuff, the undertaker takes all of his gear off and he leaves a dead center of the ring. And he walks back you know, it's, and the crowd is chanting, thank you, taker. He's been doing this for 20 years. And all this cheering, all this fucking yes, and I'm crying like a fucking bitch. <laughs> the last time I cried like that was at my wedding when my wife came down the aisle in a dress that I looked at and I went, you're wearing four PlayStation Pros. <laughs> I'm, Like, it's not macho tier up the side, it's both ducks. Just, it is this close to being an anime character. That... And he walks away. He's standing on the same spot where he's gonna go into the ground. There's all this smoke and lighting effects. And he stops and there's all this cheering in the crowd and he just does this. At which point, all of the pyrotechnics ever used during the invasion of Bosnia. I'm just like, fuck, I know. And then he leaves. I was like, I felt like those soldiers that have to clean up the battlefield after the Avengers have finished fucking everyone up. Because you know there's some doers with a broom going, yeah, no fine Thanos. Yo, do us. If you'd kept your mind off of the jewelry and got yourself a trade. You know, Thanos had a dad saying, have you tried woodwork? Just try woodwork. Get, get a trade behind your name. I know being the Lord of the universe is, it, not everybody gets to do it. You know, get a trade and, oh, fuck. You know, Thanos is that butch because of that stupid chin and how much teasing he got. He fucking, when you got a scrotum for a chin, that's a tough gig. That's hard work. But yeah, so I go to WrestleMania and I come back and I was like, what am I gonna do now? What am I gonna do? So I started writing this show and then I started watching a movie about 15 minutes afterwards because I have a little attention deficit problem. <laughs> and I've noticed now with like different movies treat us different ways, they, they prepare us for different things. In 2000, I think it was, Independence Day came out and we all lost our shit because nobody knew what it was. It was the first time they ever tried punting a film for a year. The first trailer was just thin, thin. They were like, I know I was eating popcorn. I didn't look at the screen, what the fuck is coming? And for a year, 
That's all. It's just. <laughs> and for a year, that was a conversation on the internet. And then Independence Day comes out. And what annoys me about those movies is whenever aliens invade, they never once do they touch the Southern Hemisphere. And that is fucking racist. I think we could hold our own. Hillbrow alone would fire half of them. Fucking hell, that pisses me off when it's like alien ships arrive. And even the movie even says, alien ships arrive. And in small print, I shit you not, Southern Hemisphere unaffected. Fuck you. It's like, what happened? Did they fly over Zimbabwe and go, fuck, we've been here. Okay, moving on. <laughs> And I mean, Independence Day happens, you see all these ships come out. Imagine they stop over Jobu, like... Four thousand armed gangs. All of them going, look at the size of this fucking hubcap! <laughs> Call God's going, yeah, bring, bring, come, come, come. Oh, ten, 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 ten. Okay, down, down, down. Okay. Okay, yeah. We'll go. I, I, I. Is this a Volvo? I'd love to see that. I'd love to see alien ships landing all over. It's a freaking landing in Australia. You realize all the, like most if not all of the like landmass of Australia, the people only live along the coastline apparently. So the middle of it is so vicious. Even Australia and its wildlife does not fuck with it. They would land and then something like the freaking spice worm from Dune. <laughs> You're like, Jeff? <laughs> Jeff? <laughs> this isn't fucking funny anymore, Jeff. Ah, oh, shit. And then... Oh, yeah, Independence Day came out about 1996, sorry. Or 1997, but anyway. Um, point is, the film that pretty much reset the bar for me is when The Matrix came out. That film was just fucking... Like, there isn't enough to get you in the mindset. For, okay, fine, if you'd watched all of, all of the freaking anime movies you could, then you would go, oh fuck, I've seen that before. But apart from that, so watching The Matrix reset the bar on all sorts of things. I mean, there's that amazing speech at the end, which I, it was just freaking awesome. And where he says, I know you're listening. I can feel you. I'm going to show these people something you don't want them to see, a world without you. And who knew that that film was foretelling the coming of social media? <laughs> There's that whole scene in it where it says, the matrix is the world that has been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth, the truth that you are a slave. Change the words to social media. Social media is the world that has been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth that you are a slave. I'm just saying Trump got into it. El diablo cazador de hombres and suddenly the green, the orange orangutan now rule the world. I'm just saying. And I remember watching The Matrix and I really loved it. And then it came out on, on, on like IMAX and I couldn't go. But I have two mates who like to do wacky shit they went to see The Matrix on IMAX on acid. <laughs> the way they described it, they watched it and they did it in the second one and the third one. They said there's a scene where Trinity jumps backwards through the glass and the camera follows her through on a screen the size of an aircraft carrier with all that quadraphonic super duper sound. They were the only ones in the theater and they went, Woo! Like they were on a fucking roller coaster. Like, yeah! Fucking yeah! You know you're screaming loudly when you can tell that the guy in the projection booth is going. <laughs> Should we say something? You don't go near crazy. 
These are the same fucking idiots that when Event Horizon, this fucking freaky horror movie came out, for those of you who've never seen it, it's, it's basically gore body horror shit in space. It's Star Trek with chainsaws and knives and shit. It's vicious. And they went to see Event Horizon on acid. So there's a person shaking his head there, he knows. They saw shit that when they watched the movie again off of acid, they went, wait a minute, there's shit missing from this movie. <laughs> there's a scene in the film where there's this massive, massive drive shaft in the middle of the bridge that just starts rotating all by itself. There's nothing else, it's just the characters are talking to each other and there's this huge... <laughs> According to my friend Stan, something leaned out from behind it, looked straight at him and went, yeah. and he went, and it went, and Stan went to look at his friend, and Jeff, his friend, was going, were the only ones in the theater, again, because they go do this shit on a Monday morning at nine. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they just fuck around all weekend and are still tripping balls on acid on the Monday morning and go, well, fuck, we have to do something. <laughs> Apparently they walked out of the theater at about noon going, <laughs> I found out because I'm walking in, I'm going to go see the phone. I was like, dude, what are you guys? Looking out for the snakes. <laughs> Moral of that story is don't fucking do drugs, kids. <laughs> they don't do drugs and then go see something that's just a fucking hell. But I mean, I've always loved horror movies. I don't know if, by round of applause, who here is a fan of horror movies? Make some noise. Okay. So, it's marvelous. <laughs> I love horror movies purely because fucking hell. It's, an, it's, it's a step-by-step -step instruction as to what not to do. It's like, clearly these idiots who are in the film have not seen other horror films. They must exist in a parallel universe where no horror movies were ever fucking made. Because why the fuck, over and over, some goes up the stairs. Why? What did you do? Man was, no, fucking back door. There's only one of them, boys. Run the fuck away! Nike used it as an ad the one time. It was fucking hilarious. Nike used it as an ad. There was a woman, the whole thing of Camp Crystal Lake. It's like fucking Friday the 13th vibes, and you can hear this. She's having a shower. Monster shows up. She puts on Nikes and fucking. And eventually the monster's like, yeah, fuck it. It's a timeshare. Another one will come. I love horror movies. I saw this one called The Exorcist, The, the Beginning. No, not the good one. This was, this was fucking far down the line where clearly Max von Sydow needed cash. Because Exorcist, The Beginning is the prequel where I found that clearly as a priest, this guy has no concept of self-preservation. Because every time this duist arrives anywhere, first of all, it's always dusk or night. There's no fucking sun. Where he's in Morocco. There's a shit ton of sun. I know, I've seen it in Star Wars. There's a shit ton. And this dude is walking. Every time he walks into a room, this voice is, Father Merrick. Normal person just walking in. Is it Father Merrick? Dude, what's your name? Are you asking me? Oh, uh, uh, either or. Yes, ma'am? Isabella. Isabella. Yes. Now, Isabella, where do you work? Okay, it's consulting. Okay, so where you, where you work, if you walked in one day and it was sunlight outside and suddenly it's dark as fuck inside the building and then one of your colleagues looks at you and goes, Isabella, <laughs> your body would move for you. You'd be like, You'd be back in the parking lot going, oh, am I trying? your body's going, shut the fuck up, I've seen this guy before. 
There's a scene in this film that I actually loved. It's, it's basically, they shot it in this natural formation. It's a cave that runs in a dead straight line for over a mile. It was formed by a glacier. And so their plan was, they've got this long ass narrow tunnel. And on one side is Father Merrick. And on the other side is the evil possessed one. And this thing comes around, and he's on the other end, and going, the power of Christ compels you, the power of Christ, the power of Christ compels you, the power that's a long fucking tunnel. <laughs> like, why the hell did they start her so far back? Like, surely at some point she goes, <laughs> fuck it, it's a timeshare, there'll be other ones. <laughs> I love the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, although I have one question. How do you not hear someone sneaking up on you with a chainsaw? <laughs> it's three o'clock in the morning in the middle of a forest. No one else is there. How do you not hear? These things do not have like an idle silencer mode. <laughs> I mean, the giggling alone would give this fucker away. And they're always they're telegraphing their bloody position. There's a chick pushing a guy in a wheelchair. Sorry, Bubba, but at this fucking point, there's a man with a chainsaw who wears skin for a mask. Your ass is on your own. But no, she's a good person. And she's, she's pushing away going, Billy? Billy! <laughs> Billy! The guy in the wheelchair is saying fuck all. He's going, I can't fucking believe I'm with this dumbass. He's going to get us both killed. And I always wondered, chainsaw is only idle for so long. Don't ask me how I know this. Fun holiday job. And... <laughs> That's the laugh of knowledge right there. <laughs> and so what happens, you know, chainsaws only idle so long. What happens if this thing runs out of petrol before he is done sneaking up on this person? Like what is it? Everything all right? <laughs> yes, it's perfectly fine. Uh, um, this is just, this never happened to me before. <laughs> Maybe if we wait 10 minutes and we try again. <laughs> I mean, realistically, at that point, you're so hyped up. Ah, oh, fuck. Nail file. Come here, bitches. <laughs> You don't want to have this dude in full getup. I always wanted to do this, but South Africa people have guns and there are police. Um, I always wanted to dress up in the full getup and show up with the hockey mask, the leather apron, the chainsaw, and just act like an engine at three in the morning. Yeah, five rand. And leathered, yeah, thanks. Can I clean? Yeah, you can clean the windshield. Mm. <laughs> oh, shit. The things I always wondered about horror movies as well is like, if you, the, one of the rules about horror movies is that no matter how fast you run, the monster keeps up with you by walking. I'm convinced this dick has like a golf cart somewhere. <laughs> or an Uber. This is where Uber actually came from. It was a, t it's just, just dial the number and the guy arrives. And yeah, I was after her, but slowly. Mm. Yeah, he's fine driver, thank you very much. So can you imagine the dudes in the tank? Yeah, short left driver, thank you very much. Because it's always a... <laughs> no. I mean, that was the other thing. I mean, if you're chasing after someone who's clearly athletic and young and vital. There's not a fuck am I going to keep up with you. It's like most, if not all of you, could outrun me quite easily just by saying, let's go. I'll go. <laughs> After about 20 meters, I'd be like, mm, 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 mm. I'd love to see that in a horror movie, guy with a hockey mask. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> oh, fucking Uber, where are you? Where are you? But above all else, I mean, music, 
was the other thing that just kept me sane at, in my teens all the way up until now. Music matters a lot to me. It's a big deal to me that my chemical romance has come back. Um, yes, thank you. So I, I dig emo music, I don't fucking care. Why? Because they put everything into that singing. Emo music has the amount of emotion behind it the way single people fuck. Okay, there's like everything in that shag, yes. Why? Because they are not just shagging for now, they are auditioning for their next shag is what they're doing. So when, when the freaking, when you the, the freaking, and you sing and yes, and the lyrics freaking mean something. I am still trying to understand how a song with the lyrics like, the X6 or the X5 looks like a panda. Panda, 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 panda. Panda, 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 panda. How did that get past the censors? I mean, holy shit. At some point you must sit there going, are these the only lyrics he's written? Because he was mumbling some shit earlier. Uh, uh, fuck, let's, let's listen again. And then two days have gone by and there's blood coming out of your nose and you haven't slept. And it's like, what, what, what the fuck's going on? Why are we watching Event Horizon on acid? What the hell's going on? I love music. And music means so much to me. I love listening to the lyrics of songs. And I've noticed that every now and again, whoever's written the song has either run out of words or has just decided to take the piss. <laughs> I first realized this when I, was, when I was studying drama at Pretoria Technicon. Because yeah, I studied drama to be an uh, actor. Yes, and then I became a comedian because I want something solid to fall back on. <laughs> and so I'm watching, I'm listening to the song, and I was watching Greece. And there's a point in Greece where you can literally tell this is where the songwriters dropped acid. <laughs> because there is a song that goes, We go together like Rama Lama Lama, de boop de boop de boop. And that just gets your attention. Later on in the song, they go, Rama Lama Lama, de boop de boop de boop, dip de dip de dip, shoo up de doop. I'm going, Fuck off. <laughs> you couldn't come up with words for people to dance to, so you're just going, la, 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 la. Not to be outdone, Korn does the same freaking thing. Yeah. Listen to Freak on a Leash. Three quarters of the way through the song, Freak on a Leash, the lead singer goes, Senda, 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 And you know somewhere in Norway, somebody's going, that's a good one. <laughs> because, I don't know what happened in Norway. I don't know what the fuck. I don't know when it was decided they were pulling out the ballots and they said, and Norway will make all of the black metal. <laughs> all this very freaking dark stuff like. I'm going, holy shit. You are so angry. How did the nation that produced that produce the chick who does the back vocals on Frozen 2? How? How do you get. <laughs> Maybe that's the final stage of whatever that disease is. You start as and as it advances, <laughs> and then the ice doesn't move because it's afraid. <laughs> I I got to MC a, a metal festival many many years ago. It was called Thornfest, and it was a hoo -hoo -hoo. yeah special. I think the reason why they had me do it is because they figure, well, he's big, maybe they won't eat him. <laughs> I was introducing these bands. There was a Norwegian band, I think, that came out, and they were, there was a huge fucker. He's seven foot tall. The guitar in his hands looks like a banjo. And he comes, he goes, hi, I am Lars. This is my band, Hammers of Hades. This is a song I wrote about my mom. <laughs> Seventy thousand decibels of rage and pitbull comes out of her. I'm just literally going, holy shit! What pisses me off? There's people in the crowd singing along. I know you can't have that many people with a mouth is moving at exactly the same time. That's not freaking. Uh, that's witchcraft, right, lady? There. And I got, bless you. I got the lyric sheet. There was a roadie backstage. I got this. Is the fuck? Please show me this thing. And I looked. And I'm like, no, it isn't. <laughs> when the fuck was a verb? A verb. <laughs> That's when I realized half of these bands probably have the same songwriter like pop music. They have one disgruntled 
ex army on coke and whiskey, half Rottweiler, half pit bull dog in a basement that they prod with a stick and then just that's good. Now we need a bridge. That's even better. We will do that one. And listening to that music taught me something. There's no triangle solo in metal. <laughs> Not at all. I mean, finding a triangle solo is hard enough anyway. The last time I played a triangle was when I was in primary school and they had music appreciation class. <laughs> Some of you did this, where they gave you instruments to see if any of you knew your way around a freaking. <laughs> there was that frog thing where you. <laughs> And the triangle is what they gave you as just their way of saying, listen, just don't fucking break it, okay? <laughs> that was their way of saying, yeah, okay, fine, let's include you. And you would sit there for the whole song, like, clum, 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 and the teacher would give you the nod, and you'd go, hey, A plus. <laughs> but you're never, ever going to hear a triangle solo in any music. You're never going to hear it in like Bob Dylan songs. The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. Ding! Oh, weed's ready. <laughs> you're never going to... You're never going to hear it in a Rammstein song. Rammstein for your brand. Ding! <laughs> no. No. Can imagine that? Oh, we don't. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> but I think, above, above all else, I love it when somebody does a cover version of somebody else's song and makes it better, or just gives it gravitas. I listened to a song called Highway 61 Revisited by Bob Dylan, and then I heard Johnny Cash's version. Fargan hell. For those of you who don't know, this is the version Johnny Cash does. God said to Abraham, kill me a son. Abe says, man, you must be putting me on. God say, no. Abe say, what? God say, do whatever you want, Abraham. But the next time you see me coming, you better run. Abe says, where do you want this killing done? God says, out on highway 61. Which has got a fucking shit ton more fear to it than Bob Dylan's version of God said to Abraham, kill me a son. Abe said, man, you must be good here. God said, no. Abe said, what? Bob Dylan to me always sounded like just before he started saying they wound him up. <laughs> One day they're going to forget to, he's going to be at like the Grammy or something. Yeah, Oh, fuck! Turn joke on me and dance. Ah, shit. Wow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is, this is um, going to be like, not overshare, but this is a deep, meaningful moment for me. Um, my wife, who's here tonight, bless her. Um, we. <laughs> This, this week, we celebrated our eight years together anniversary. And um, she's the reason that I'm sane. I know you're thinking, what is this sane you speak of? <laughs> but she is, and it's because she keeps introducing me to new things. She's the one that made me go watch Phantom of the Opera. And it's an amazing piece of work. I did not know what I was in for, and it was truly astonishing. But she first had to do the cell. She said, okay, we're going to go see Phantom of the Opera, not would you like to go see. Those of you who are planning on getting married, the questions fucking disappear. They're just more like orders because at some point your partner will figure out it's like the army. We accept orders. We fucking go. That's what we do. Okay. Don't, don't just give us orders. We will march. We will fight. We will die. My wife has got this idea in her head now. We must declutter the house. Guys do not declutter. This is why we have war. We declutter an area when they <laughs> see everything is very decluttered and flat. Yeah, <laughs> this is like she, the time she said to me, she says, Listen, once you when you're going shopping, I said, Yes, I am. So go out and get us some scatter cushions. I said, <laughs> No, 
It is the first time the word no just came out of me without sarcasm, irony, focal, just no. As though all of my DNA actually went, the fuck you say? So she now has to sell me this idea of Phantom of the Opera. And I was like, okay, let's hear it. And she says, well, think about it this way. Um, the Phantom lives under this very large building, this very large Baroque building. He wears all black, a cape, he wears a mask. And I said, oh, okay, medieval Batman, I can do this. <laughs> and so we go, and I was sold. I was amazed at what I saw. People, it, it, if you've never gone, if you've never seen it, try it. It's, it's better to see the actual stage production because there's so much emotion behind it. It's like, how long have the two of you been together? Four months. Four months, okay. So, um, if you ever need to like really sweep the last off of her feet, just, here's just, it's just a suggestion. I'm not fucking saying do it. It does require an underground lake and that she sings opera, but you know, and you need a, you need a boat and shit like that. But just music of the night is one of the most beautiful songs to just, just freaking hit on someone I've ever heard. It's just, the tone in his voice is like, softly, slowly, into each temptation, touch me, trust me, into each sensation. And I'm going, holy fuck, I am like a fan at this point. The problem is, there's a little ADHD problem I've got. I am hearing the song, but at the same time in the back of my head, it has translated it to something else. What I'm hearing is soft kitty. Yeah, my wife finds that joke funny now. I became rather well acquainted with a certain sofa for a while. <laughs> but that wasn't the end of it. The last musical we went to see together was Les Miserables, Les Mis. And I'd heard of Les Mis when I was studying drama, but I did not experience the full force of what was coming. Um, first of all, clue was in the title. It's not a happy story. Les. <laughs> Les Miserables, okay? It's not Les Slightly Depressed. <laughs> Les, uh, take a couple of lithium, you'll be fine. It's Les Miserables. The opening song lets you know what you're in for. There's these guys pulling on a freaking ship or whatever, trying to get it off the reef. I didn't know there were reefs off the coast of France, but anyway. And they're pulling away in the song. Look down, look down, you're standing in your grave. Look down, look down, you'll always be a slave. I'm going, whoa, 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 whoa. fuck, bring on the Prozac. Let's do this, let's go. <laughs> And I'm watching this film and I'm actually blown away again. It's amazing. And then something weird happened. The people behind me are having a different experience. There's a couple behind me. I glanced back once and I saw what was going on and I did not involve myself in it anymore. There is a man and a woman sitting there they're married, I could see the jewelry. <laughs> they bear the mark. And I could see them and this dude is snoring <laughs> proper. The kind of snoring that you've only seen your grandparents do. The kind of snoring where it looks like they're dead. Yeah, this guy. <laughs> My mom did that once, it freaked me the fuck out. I went, oh! <laughs> the, the woman sitting next to this man, this is clearly an anniversary, probably her idea. She gave the order, he said yes, and then promptly knocked himself out. The amount of rage coming out of this woman 
changes the fucking weather. <laughs> it got colder in those rows. Like you just literally. <laughs> There's a, there's a scene that describes it right in Doctor Who. He said, how did you know to come find me? The doctor said, we looked to the heavens and the stars were going out. <laughs> that kind of anger. The eye of Mordor opens above this chick. <laughs> you can hide from me. <laughs> and this is the... <laughs> This chick is just holding herself together, keeping all of it inside because she doesn't want to harm all these other people. She wants to save this and nurture it so that this doist is the one who gets it all. But it is I saw shadows of darkness extend out of existing shadows. I saw the same demon from the previous joke. <laughs> Meanwhile, back in my experience, this dude is sawing wood like proper. And it's starting to mess with my version of the song that I'm hearing. Because there's a beautiful song unfolding on stage. On my own, pretending he's beside me. What I'm hearing is, on my own, pretending he's beside me. All of <laughs> we walk the streets the <laughs> I'm pissing myself laughing, but I'm holding that inside. I'm keeping, I'm shaking. Click. My wife is thinking that I'm crying, so I'm scoring brownie points off of this guys. <laughs> and it's awesome. I just wanted to be there at the end when this fight kicked off, because when the musical was finished, she woke him up gently. <laughs> and he went, <laughs> <laughs> And he did that freaking way of waking up. Only guys do this crap. They do it either when they're pissed or they're, they're, they're slightly still half asleep. When <laughs> he got up, he's gone up, his wife's gone. <laughs> he walked that flat-footed walk, the drunks do. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to be with them in the car. Picture the scene. It's a rather lovely BMW X5 that looks like a panda. And they're driving along merrily and they don't need to turn the air conditioning on because she's and he's like, he's just trying to maintain driving home. And he's like, you see, guys, when you know you, when you napped during a seized something with your wife and you know you missed something, don't make my <laughs> This is for geeks, non-geeks, nerds, non-nerds. It's everyone. It is the circle of strife. You never make contact. It's a, it's, there's a great line from, he was a voodoo priest slash drug dealer. His name was King Willie. He said, you never make eye contact with the demon. Until him come calling. And I was just, he's just, he's driving along this dumb door. He's a friggin' <clears throat> And next to him is this lady just going, you know she's fucking pissed off because she's doing the hand thing. You know the hand thing? Is when they start doing this, fucking hell. That's fanning the reactor, trying to cool it down. But there's little men rushing around and saying, oh shit, whoa, whoa, whoa. And she's just fucking talking. There are demons with her going, it's okay, he's a dick, it's okay. And this dumb bastard is going to say the phrase that has kicked off every fight since the dawn of creation and me, this little fly on the wall, is putting up his vibranium shield, hoping he doesn't get fucked up in the shockwave. And he's just driving and he's like... And there's just this... What the hell's the matter with you? A 
freaking chunk of the earth is torn out and sent into orbit. It shatters against the atmosphere, raining dirt and fucking extraterrestrial bones on London. You see the TARDIS go, fuck! And this huge explosion, dogs and monkeys flying fucking everywhere. And at the end of it all, it's silence as the dust settles. There's this crater in the middle of London. All you can hear is the distant ringing of the last uh, fucking car alarm, which then politely goes and, and just, there's water spraying around. It's just ash, gently falling ash. It looks like snow, but it, 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 snow is not. And it's very, and at the center of this crater, is this woman and this dumb shit and he's holding a steering wheel <laughs> and then his wife will turn to him and tell the great universal lie that has bonded us together since the first time she will look at him and say i'm fine <laughs> ladies and gentlemen you've been fantastic Thank you for staying. Thank you for being amazing. You have been awesome. Bless you and all who sail with you. Thank you for coming through tonight. My name is Victoria.